Hi, so I'm going to be looking at the film Frayed in this video, which is a psychological slasher film. The story for this one is that we've got, it um, starts off with a birthday party, and during the course of this, a young boy called Kurt is really naughty, and he gets sent to his bedroom by his mother. And later on, after the party's finished, she goes up to the room to try and make peace with her son, but he, um, in a shocking turn of events, he actually attacks his mother with a baseball bat, hits her repeatedly in the face, murdering her. It's a really brutal scene. We then flash forward 13 years and we learn that Kurt has been institutionalised into a psychiatric unit and he's about to be moved to a more secure facility that is better equipped to handle his needs. Um, but during the transfer he actually escapes and goes on a bit of a murderous rampage. Um, we, the, the, the kind of story then goes off onto three kind of separate threads. We follow um, a security guard that tried to stop Kurt from escaping that actually got injured. Then he kind of um, he's then stalked by Kurt throughout the film so we're following him as he's kind of chased by the killer. We also follow the local sheriff who actually is the father of Kurt so it's a very personal business for him to try and apprehend his son so we follow him and the local police force as they try to um, catch the suspect and we also follow um, Kurt's sister Sarah who is a teenager who is um, kind of going off into the woods camping with her boyfriend and her best friend and her boyfriend, a friend being called Veronica I think and they're kind of going off for a, um, a night of sex, partying, drinking and so on and so forth, but it's actually in the woods not too far from where Kurt has um, escaped into, so they're kind of unwittingly putting themselves in the um, right in the path of danger there because Kurt's very close to where they are. So it kind of breaks off into those three threads as it goes on. The plus points for this one is that the opening scene is um, very well done. It's um, very graphic, but it's um, very brutal, like I said, but it's um, certainly a very affecting scene. It really um, sets the mood and sets the tone for the whole thing really creates a foreboding atmosphere that kind of carries on for the next 20 to 30 minutes. The, um, the opening 30 minutes or so is all very well done, very atmospheric, very suspenseful, and um, it really sets the tone for the film. Unfortunately, it does kind of ta taper off for me a, a little bit towards the later stages, as we'll go into later, but um, the, the opening segments are really, really good, really, really strong opening. It actually is a little bit reminiscent of Halloween in terms of the storyline, which for me is not a problem because many slasher films borrow from each other anyway, so I don't really mind that. It actually kind of reminded me of a cross between the, the original Halloween and the Rob Zombie remake, but that was fine for me. So for the first 20 to 30 minutes, it's really strong and it really gets you involved in it. So it's a great start for the film. Um, despite being quite a low budget release, I think it went straight to DVD. It's actually very well shot and directed. The sound quality is fine. The picture quality is pretty decent for the most part. It's a bit dark at times, but you know, not too bad. Um, it's also very well done for the gore effects. The first kill that I mentioned where the mother is killed with, 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 with the baseball bat is really, really well done. You certainly wouldn't tell from that that it's on a low budget. They've done a really great job putting that scene to, to all, all, all together. You know, it looks great. So um, in a very disturbing way. Anyway, um, but there's not a lot of blood and guts after that point because I've tried to focus more on kind of shocks and scares and suspense, which is, which is admirable for them to do that. But um, when they do use blood, it is, you know, well done, the, the, the production values in that sense seem to be fine, even though it is on a, a shoestring budget. Um, I quite like the character of Sarah, his sister, she was quite a likeable character, and her friend Veronica was quite fun as well, she wasn't as likeable but she was good in a fun sense. But I really kind of cared about Sarah and wanted her to survive, so um, I guess it's always a good thing when they can make you root for a character like that, so that's a plus point. There's also quite a good scene um, where Kurt's father, Pat, the local sheriff, is exploring the cell where Kurt has just escaped from. And um, in doing so, he actually stumbles across like a hidden crawl space behind the bed where Kurt has actually um, put a lot of his pictures that he's drawn over the, over, over the years and they're quite disturbing, quite creepy. That's a really good scene. It's a little bit unrealistic, I suppose, because it's very unlikely there would be like a massive crawl space right parallel to Kurt's room. And even if there was, would he find it and, you know, Managed to go in and out un undetected for all, all those years, hiding his drawings in there? Probably not, but so it's a bit unrealistic, but it's a, way, a really well done scene. It's one of the better scenes, I would say, in the film, despite the fact that it's not all that plausible. There's also a double twist at the end, which is a certainly a very shocking ending. The first twist you might possibly see coming, it's a little bit pre 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 predictable maybe, but the second twist, certainly for me, really caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting that whatsoever, so... I do do a really good job of catching you by surprise and really shocking you with the ending. It is a bit of a double-edged sword for me though because the second twist was a bit much in my eyes and as well as being confusing was also um, a bit of a cheat. It kind of rendered the whole film a bit pointless really which we'll get into in, in the bad points. 
which we're going into now. And oh, although the ending is very clever and it's you know, very well thought out, you've got to give them credit for coming up with it and for surprising us as they do. But but it is a bit. The second one, the, the, the second twist is a bit of a cheat. Like I say, it kind of makes the whole film pointless, really, to an extent. And I did feel a bit um, deceived after I've seen it. Um, it's almost like they've kind of just put the second twist in there just to shock us for the sake of shocking us. Like I thought maybe the first twist would be a bit predictable, so they thought, oh, we can't just go with that. We've got to add a second one to really mess with people's heads. So it kind of feels like they're just doing it for the sake of doing it, really. But but um, it is clever, like, like like I say, but it's a, it's a bit much for me. I think it might have been better if I just have had the first twist and, and not the second one. It also doesn't really make that much sense, the second twist. I don't want to give away spoilers, but I'm going to have to go into it a little bit here just to discuss this point. And the whole thing is obviously supposed to be like a, um, or the, not the whole thing, but the majority of what we see during the course of, of the film after Kurt's escape is supposed to be just like his, um, his fantasies of what he would do if he was to escape. And it was all kind of like him just being in his room, sitting there, fantasising about the whole thing. So um, if that was the case, though, would he really imagine himself as someone that's so conflicted and so confused that he doesn't even know whether there's a clown chasing him for real or not. He's like he thinks there's like this imaginary clown chasing him. Would he really think that? Probably not. I know that's how his mental state kind of is anyway. But in his fantasies, at least, he probably would imagine himself as being some kind of Michael Myers type figure, wouldn't he? Not a really confused guy that doesn't know whether there's a clown chasing him or not. And on top of that, would he really imagine his own sister talking about sex with her friend and then and then getting into some heavy petting and kissing with her boyfriend? Probably not. That seems like a weird thing for a brother to think about his sister doing, doesn't it? So it doesn't really add up all that much. So there's a few little things that don't really make sense about the twist as well when you look back on on the film in hindsight. On top of that, it's a little bit confusing, the, um, the, the second twist. I understood the first twist fine, but the second one did confuse me a little bit and I kind of came out of, of, of the film not quite knowing what had happened and what was, what was going on. I had to consult the internet to kind of read up on it to fully understand it. That could just have been me being a bit stupid, a bit dense, but um, and there are certainly clues if you look back on on the film that you probably would have missed that on the first viewing that would on a repeated viewing would probably you know add a bit of plausibility to the ending would um, and would serve as clues. But um, on first viewing, at least for me, it was a little bit confusing and the ending really caught me off guard and really left me feeling a little bit muddled. Really, I didn't really completely fully understand it. So that might be the case for you as, as well. So something to bear in, in mind. Um, but even before learning about the ending that kind of soured it for me a little bit, after the first 20 to 30 minutes, I did kind of um, think the film started to wane a little bit and kind of started to meander and lose its way. It didn't really hold my interest as much as I thought it would do after it really, really piqued my interest in the first 20 to 30 minutes, especially with the opening scene with the brutal killing of, of the mother. But after that, it kind of... It just kind of lost its way slightly for me and wasn't as interesting as I hoped it would be. And it kind of didn't get boring by any means, but it just wasn't quite as engaging as it was in the early stages. I had kind of gone, gone, in, gone into watching the film with high expectations, though, as I'd really liked the trailer and I'd read some good things about it. So maybe if you were to watch it with no expectations whatsoever, you might get more out of it. But for me, it kind of lost its way a little bit after a great opening. Also, the killer's mask isn't very good. It's... um doesn't really look very scary you don't see an awful lot of the killer with the mask it's just little shots here and there but it's not a very good mask in my opinion but that's obviously only a really small thing so on then to my um, verdict for this one and there are numerous good things going on in the film and the writers do deserve credit for going in a kind of more psychological direction that's more kind of catered towards suspense and shocks and scares as opposed to just blood and guts that you get in a lot of slashes and it's certainly a more cerebral more um psychological film the most in in the genre so they do deserve credit for going off in that direction which is kind of bold but overall i don't think the second twist really works that well for me kind of sour the film a little bit renders it all a bit of a cheat it's quite deceiving and it didn't all make all that much sense like i mentioned with the brother it, brother thinking about his sister talking about sex and that kind of thing but um overall it was still a good film it's definitely very atmospheric very unsettling particularly in the first opening scenes the first 20 to 30 minutes are really really strong it does for me at least kind of lose its weight a bit as it goes on but overall it's very good i definitely recommend it if you've heard about it and you and you're intrigued by it um so yeah um just quickly have a look at the back of the dvd by the way and it does um have some decent special features so i don't know if you, if you can read that but um it's got some decent effort put into it in terms of the disc release they've done a good job there i believe it's only on dvd not blu-ray 
and I believe it indeed went straight to DVD, didn't get a cinematic release as far as I know. Um, I'm not quite sure who that's supposed to be because that doesn't look like the mask the killer was wearing. I'm not completely sure what's going on there, but um, anyway, that's not important. So on then to my um, rating out of five for this one, I'm going to give it um, I'm going to give it three stars out of five. It probably would have gotten four, but I didn't like the ending that much, so I'm going to give it a three. So yeah, three out of five for me. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time.